Board of Health, uh, Adams, uh, August 19th, 4 p.m. And I will start with a notice on recording. Uh, uh, and uh, the pandemic waiver to conduct public meeting uh, virtually. Can everybody hear me all right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, and Pete, are, I see you are recording. So, so this, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, first went to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, general law chapter 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on a number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Town of Adams Board of Health is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. Uh, attending remotely are uh, members Dr. Peter Hoyt, Dr. Laura Grandchamp, and myself, Dr. David B. Rhodes. Uh, we, are all, we are all remote. We have posted today's agenda, which included the call-in information for today's meeting, and I see we do have uh, callers uh, on the meeting. And despite our best efforts, if we are not able to provide for real-time access, for the public to participate in today's meetings. A recording of this meeting will be made available. Um, as we are participating remotely, please uh, note that all votes taken during this meeting will be made by roll call. Uh, I will state the member's name and ask for their vote or each vote necessary. And finally, uh, uh, I believe uh, Pete will be uh, taking uh, attendance of who's here for the phone callers and that uh, 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 particularly when we get to the point where we will speak, uh, what we'll, we'll have the hearing, uh, we definitely need to have a list of who that will be. Um, so uh, moving along, uh, I, now I see that uh, Attorney St. John is here. Uh, I would just ask you, we uh, approved the minutes of the three previous meetings at our August 5th meeting, but then that meeting uh, had to be abruptly uh, closed due to a glitch in the information available for phone in. Uh, do those approvals still stand? Why don't you why don't you bring it up again, make a new motion for approval of those minutes um, and have have a vote on that. Better safe. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we have three uh, uh, meetings, uh, minutes. The one from August 5th is not available yet, uh, but uh, these are May 20, June 3rd, and July 1. Uh, I had made, uh, uh, asked for revisions on June 3rd that the uh, citation of me as vice chairman be just listed as chairman because I was voted in at that time. And for the July 1st, there were six extra pages, pages five through 10, which I asked to be deleted. And with those um, uh, changes and amendations, uh, I asked for a motion to approve the minutes as so amended. Uh, motion, uh, so moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? No. And uh, uh, we'll take a vote. Uh, Pete? Uh, yes. Laura? Your vote, Laura? Yes. yes. And Dave, uh, I also vote yes. So they, they meet, meet, the three uh, sets of minutes are now approved. We will now move to the public hearing section. Um, so I think the best thing for me to do right now is to ask for a motion to open the public hearing. Uh, so moved. 
Do I have a second? Second. I will start the discussion with uh, my talking points. Um, I will now open the public hearing on revising tobacco regulations for the town of Adams. After we open the hearing, I will ask board member Pete Hoyt to compile a list of attendees who wish to speak. I believe Laura is volunteering to uh, time the speakers. Uh, after the hearing is closed, the board will decide whether to deliberate and vote tonight or do so at a subsequent meeting. This regulation is promulgated by the authority granted to the Adams Board of Health by Massachusetts General Law Chapter 111, Section 31, stating that boards of health may make reasonable health regulations. We do have a quorum at our meeting. Uh, so following continuing with the discussion, we recognize that tobacco smoking is one of the major preventable causes of mature, premature morbidity and mortality. Our goal here is to prevent underage individuals from starting to use tobacco. As such, we would like to revise our tobacco sales regulations to reflect current guidance from the Department of Public Health, as well as to conform with the recently adopted new tobacco law. Briefly, our revised regulations will cap the number of permits at 11, we're now at 10. After a period to be determined, reduce the cap to nine as permits are retired or revoked with a target of one per thousand, at which point no new permits will be issued unless a current licensor is retired or revoked. And restrict the location of any new permits to a, to a 500 foot setback from a school, playground, athletic field, or other tobacco vendor. And as I said, can, uh, you know, conform with the new tobacco law in the flavor ban, except for an adult only shops, and also in the fines structure for infraction. An allowance is included so that the board may adjust the cap from time to time. The ground rules for the hearings are, I will recognize a speaker at random. He, she will be given, uh, uh, let's say, uh, three minutes. Uh, notice will be given at 30 seconds. When the speaker's time is reached, uh, we will ask them to stop. And after all have spoken, an opportunity will be given for a second statement of 90 seconds for rebuttal or an additional point. Finally, I will ask if any attendees who have not spoken wish an opportunity to speak. Please focus your comments on the revised regulations and be civil. Rudeness will not be tolerated. Note that board members will not interact with the speakers during the testimony, but we will offer uh, as we, as if, if needed, uh, our own thoughts at, before we close the public hearing. Uh, are there any more discussion points from Pete or Laura? Um, David, I'm, I'm just uh, a point for uh, attendance. We've got uh, a couple phone calls here that I don't know who they are. Can we get those individuals identified for the attendance? So it's yes. uh, phone number 2532. Can you please state your name and, and um, address? Yes, uh, this is John Duvall, Board of Selectmen, 22 Power Street. Thanks, John. Um, 8380. That's Town Hall. Is that, is yeah, that Town Hall? Is that Mark? 8380 and 8390. Mark or Jay? And then somebody has signed in as Town of Adams, and I don't know who that is either. All right, there's some messages coming up on the chat about Deb uh, Dunlap and Jerry Garner, but they cannot call in. Um, so they're trying to do that. I also received a message. There are people who met at Town Hall uh, indicating that uh, the um, agenda, the meeting notice said the meeting would be conducted in the first floor meeting room. Um, and Deb Dunlap is trying to provide them with uh, the information to have them call in. So 
Uh, you might want to wait a bit on that too, because I think okay. you're going to have additional callers. Uh, I also understand that Selectman Rick Blanchard is trying to call in too. Okay, we, we got another caller, um, two five, no, we got two five three two. Uh, somebody else just came in, uh, two four two five. Yes, that's Rick Blanchard. Okay, thanks Rick. And we still have the 8380 and 8, Three nine zero unaccounted yeah. for. Yeah, that's. I assume that's town hall. <laughs> Excuse me. And the, whoever's town of Adams. Um, well, that's Devin Jerry. Yeah, it might be Devin Jerry then. And Dev is trying to help people call in, uh, and Jerry may be helping out as well. Okay. So my assumption would be that Devin Jerry are actually in the meeting in the meeting room because that's where the equipment is. And uh, Deb is trying to provide speaker phone access to people. Jerry cannot join the meeting. If for some reason, it's not allowing them in. Is that Pete? Is that- Jerry Greiner. Yeah, do you need to- I, I don't see a request here. <clears throat> Deb, can you speak? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, so you're 8380. And uh, if Jerry is with you, is he, is he calling from a cell phone or from a town phone? Can you hear me? I can. Yes. Okay. He tried to call in from his computer and it did not let him in. So he came upstairs so he could hear it from my phone. He, he is actually trying to go downstairs and call in from his cell phone. So he's trying to access it, but it was not allowing him in. Hello. Oh, there he oh. is. Hi. Okay. Okay. Got I got in. Okay. Are you 8390, uh, Jerry? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, sounds good. Uh, so, so before and, we do anything, can I ask at St. John something? Uh, I'm sorry. No, not right now. We are, well, it's it has, okay. It has it's to do with the public meeting, the open meeting law. Okay, go for it. Um, Ed, if um, the notification says this is going to take place in the um, 8 Park Street first floor meeting room, is um, that going to be a problem? Well, it's potentially a problem, but if, if we're setting up uh, access in that room, and since this is a Zoom meeting, it probably is going to be okay under the executive order. Uh, do you okay. know if anybody is in the selectman room right now uh, there, tr trying to get access it? No, because I went upstairs and there's nothing. There's It's dark. There's no one there. Okay. Did anybody come to the uh, room to uh, attempt to join the meeting via Zoom? Do you know? I I that I do not know because okay. I just went upstairs and I happened to notice it was dark, so I came right down and called in. Okay. All right. Well, I th I think this it's probably okay to move forward with it. I mean, we're in uncharted waters, as everybody knows, because of the COVID situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, we have. I think we've given everybody access via Zoom. I don't know of any any reason why it can't go forward unless uh, there's some reason why someone's being denied access either through uh, the uh, through the internet based through the app or through the phone call. So I would say it could go forward. Okay, very good. Thank you. I, ble I believe Jay's made it clear that uh, uh, access to town hall by the public is, is is basically by appointment. You don't just you don't just walk in. So yeah, but if somebody comes to the back door, they just sign the the uh, form that's out in the front, and they can come in. All right. Well, moving along here, is there any further discussion from Pete or Laura? Uh, then no. I, 
And then I will ask for a vote uh, on the motion to open the public hearing. Uh, Pete? Yes. Laura? Yes. Uh, Dave? Yes. So the public hearing is now open. Uh, Pete, uh, do you have a list of who would like to speak? Uh, nobody has. If you want to send him a either a hands up or raise your hand, I see Jim Bush is, is a yes. Uh, I see Joyce Brewer is a yes. Uh, DJ, yes. Uh, uh, Kare, I assume you would like to speak. Yes. Uh, yes. Did you get Jim Willis? Did I get? Jim Willis. Uh, Jim, oh, I see the thumbs up. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, and do we have Marley, Marley Cache? Does she wish to speak? I'm all, all set. Right. Marley Nish. Uh, anyone else? That I, my list is DJ, Joyce, Jim, uh, Kara, uh, and Jim Bush. Uh, any yes, others? Okay. Jim, Jim Willis. Yes. Put me first on the, the conversation. So uh, thank you, everybody, uh, Mr. Chair, fellow uh, members of the board, and those uh, on the select board, and everyone at the meeting. Uh, Jim Willis, um, the executive director for the Triton Health Department, which also uh, covers the collaborative tobacco awareness program of the Berkshires. Uh, we've been grant funded on, we're on the 27th year where we provide uh, services, education, outreach, inspection, and technical assistance to member towns throughout the county. Uh, I just want to commend the board, you know, during this unprecedented time in COVID, still having conversations with respect to tobacco control and, and, um, and what you're working on. So I, I thank you for that leadership. And I have sent the board over the past several months, multiple talking points with respect to, to what you're proposing. Um, it, it, and I don't want to belabor it, but just some quick um, talking points. You know, we still know that the adult smoking rate prevalence in the town of Adams is 91% higher than that of the state average, 26.2% uh, versus the state average of 137 uh, the rate of smoking during pregnancy in the town of Adams is 338% higher than that of the state average, uh, which is 29.8% versus 6.8. With respect to capping, the following communities in Berkshire County uh, actually have a cap, which is uh, North Adams, Williamstown, Lanesboro, Lee, Lennox, Pittsfield, Stockbridge, and Great Barrington. Um, Three of the five North County towns actually have a cap. If you, if you pull in Lanesboro, I'm not really sure if they're really considered North County, but three of the five North County towns do have a cap. Um, there are 138 municipalities in Massachusetts, which comprises 46% of the population that have a cap, and um, 128 uh, have setbacks to schools. Um, and so with all our, my workings with other municipalities on cap, as, as each municipality has its own unique issues um, in, in, all in itself, it's really up to the Board of Health to decide what is in the best interest for your community. And, and our role is to provide uh, technical assistance, whether it's through DJ Wilson, Joyce Brewer covers the, uh, the county with, with outreach and education. Our job is to assist you to, to meeting uh, standards um, that don't conflict with state law. And so we're really here to provide assistance, but it's really up to the, to the boards of health to really decide what is in the best interest of your community. And 30 so seconds. We're here to, you know, offer support and answer any questions and thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, shall I go to uh, Jim Bush? Hey. Uh, I'm liaison to the Board of Health and selectman of the town of Adams. Our town has gotten a bad reputation as being unbusiness friendly. If we regulate stores every 500 feet, 
that can sell cigarettes, that's not very f business friendly. Now, from what I understand, there's a huge fine, around $5,000. If a store owner sells a pack of cigarettes to somebody under 21 years old, then take the risk of getting fined $5,000. They're not too bright to start with. I think the fine in itself should cover anything that, th that you're trying to do right now. I don't believe that putting a cap on it, our downtown district is very small to start with. It, it, we, we just can't do this to the, the town's people that want to come into town. I understand what you're trying to do, but it's not going to work. And if you want, I mean, I don't think any store owner is going to sell them to minors. It's going to be adults, parents, or whoever is going to be selling these cigarettes to minors. That's who they should be going after. And, and they're going at the supermarkets, they're going everywhere else to buy cigarettes. They're not necessarily going to the mom and pop stores. We just, we, we just can't afford to do this in the town of Adams. Uh, I, I, I can't stress enough. I mean, we had, if I, if I go back, we had over 15 mom and pop stores in the town. Plus we had probably 12 gas stations. I, I'm not sure exactly my numbers. They're darn close. You could go to any, you could walk 20 feet and buy a pack of cigarettes. And, and the smoking, there was no smoking age back then. We didn't have the issue we have now. I, I, I feel as though that the parents and, and whomever should take the bull by the horns and be responsible for their own kids. And the fine that's being imposed if, you do, if they do get caught, it should be more than sufficient to stop any store owner from selling to a minor. It's, it, it's just, it don't even make sense. 30 seconds. I mean, the, whomever, the parents should be responsible for their kids also. I see kids on the street smoking all the time. And the parents must know they're smoking. My, parent, my kids smoked, I know, I'd be able to smell it. You know, it's, it's not very, it, this just don't make sense for the town of Adams. I'm sorry, that's my personal opinion. Thank you, thank you, Jim. Um, shall we go to Joyce? So oh, good evening to the members of the town of Adams for to help in the select board. My name is Joyce Brewer and I'm both a resident of this town as well as the Tobacco Community Partnership Program Manager for Berkshire County. Many people just call me the tobacco lady. I came to the tobacco prevention world for many reasons. First, my father and grandfather were heavy smokers and died from heart disease and cancer respectively. Both my brother and sister are smokers and have numerous tobacco health related issues with each having had open heart surgery. I am sure that these illnesses could have been avoided with proper prevention education by reducing the number of retail places to purchase tobacco in my hometown. By the way, I've been an ex-smoker for 35 years. I've educated both my children on the toll that tobacco has taken on our family and currently neither one is a smoker. I'm here today in support of permit capping and reducing the number of tobacco sales permits in the town of Adams. While there's been enormous progress in reducing smoking and tobacco use in Massachusetts, smoking is still the number one cause of preventable death and disease in the Commonwealth. Right now, I already see cigarettes and other tobacco products in almost every corner store or gas station I go into. And the amount of tobacco company advertising and promotions that fill each one of these stores is way too much. Tobacco retail displays stimulate impulse purchases by youth. The tobacco industry is targeting youth using new tobacco products aimed at kids, hooking over 4,700 or more in Massachusetts each year. Limiting the number of permits would keep tobacco products from being overly accessible, particularly to you. We monitor and limit the number of locations of liquor licenses. Why should tobacco sales permits be any different? We can do better for the kids growing up in our community. If we cap and reduce the number of tobacco sales permits available, we can limit the influence of tobacco on young people. Fewer tobacco sellers also means it's easier to monitor illegal sales should they occur. I urge you to support permit capping and reducing the number of tobacco sales permits in Adams. 
we are closer than ever to eliminating smoking as a public health problem in Massachusetts. During COVID-19 pandemic, it is now more important than ever to protect the health and well-being of the citizens of Adams, especially <laughs> I, as a resident of Adams, would like to see a wide variety of retail shops brought to our community with a more family, arts, health, and outdoor orientation. Adams should promote its history, its beauty, its strength, as well as a great place to raise our children. Thank you for your time and consideration in this matter. Thank you. Uh, Kara? Yes, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Pierre Kira, and I own a couple of shops in Adams. Uh, some of you guys made a good point. Some of you guys, to be honest with you, it didn't make any sense to me. Uh, as uh, an owner of a business, for capping on the licenses, I don't think it's gonna make any difference for controlling young children or adults to buy a cigarette. But we have an age, we gotta try to enforce the age, and I respect that. And we have a flavor you guys ban against that, and we're trying to respect that. But there's so much limit, after a hundred something years, everybody living around tobacco, their parents, grandparents smoking around, and all that sort of things, we never had that problem, basically for the health issue. From my point of view as an owner, in town, in other town as well, all over the state, we have gas stations. I think it's gonna fall back on the parents, like one of the audience mentioned. Parents has to raise their kids. What we're doing is we think we're taking a load off the parents' shoulder, and we're trying to blame ourselves as making the kids smoke, or attracting the kids to smoke more, which is not true. Because I have so many parents come buy a cigarette, a packet of cigarette or anything, they the tobacco for their own kids. That's for everybody's information right now. Everybody should know that. The parents buying for their own kids. What does the age of their children now matter? What does the flavor of that uh, items matter? If the parents buying it. And like the young lady Joyce said, a grandparents and her father passed away from the disease from blood. I respect that. God bless your soul. But it's not always we dying from cigarette. A coronavirus, did that come from cigarette? We don't know where we're gonna die from. I'm not saying tobacco is good for you, no. But I always fall back on the parents who have to raise their kids. We do support to have shops in the downtown Adams. And the capping, capping on a cigarette, I don't think it matters. Whether you have five stores, 10 stores, 15 stores, I don't think it matters. If this, if the people that don't like the store, they're gonna to go to the next one. They go to Vermont buying their flavor cigarette. They go to Vermont and New York to buy their mental cigarette. We're not doing anything by limiting our business. We're killing our business. We're killing it. We're not raising as revenue as it's supposed to be before. And if we raise our children and we, we as a store owner, we're enforcing the age, we, we go going by the law now, whatever it is, a flavor and no mental. I think that's plenty enough to do. 30 seconds. We cannot take the pressure or the responsibility of the parents from their children. We have to be responsible. We bring those kids to this world. We have to be responsible for them. We can't just give birth to them and throw them on the street and we expect them to know everything what's in life or how to run their life. And I think, I think we should do something in school, in high school. That's why the most age, right, uh, Joyce? That's why more age starting in... Uh... Excuse me. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but the time <laughs> allotment has expired. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Pierre. Okay. Uh, right. And... DJ, are you the last one? Sure. <clears throat> My name is DJ Wilson. I'm the Tobacco Control Director at Mass Municipal Association. Uh, so I work with cities and towns on this. And, you know, the average city and town has a sales regulation with a few dozen policies inside it because the industry keeps on evolving on it. This week, we've had to deal with uh, hemp wraps and figuring out if they can be sold or not. Uh, last year, two years ago, we had Juul products come on the market and they really took a toll on youth. We had youth using Juul left and right in high schools and it was a real problem and it took a while for us to tamper it down. So some of the things we do are reactive and some are proactive and one of the proactive things is to have a cap. And so uh, we ha as Jim was saying, we have 138 cities and towns with a cap already in place. The benefit is it caps the number of stores, like liquor stores, that sell this age-restricted product. Unlike liquor stores, the tobacco industry wants everybody to be able to sell cigarettes because they want them everywhere. 
but we would like to see the, a, a limited number of uh, locations in any given city or town to be able to sell. Uh, so one of the, I should have a couple notes on this is that uh, this only affects new retailers. So the section that says no uh, retailers near school within 500 feet of schools, that's for new retailers only. And also a retailer, an existing retailer would be able to sell their store to a buyer and, and that buyer would be able to capture their permit. So this is not intended to hurt the store who's trying to sell their business. I should say this is pro uh, tobacco vendor business because it limits, just like liquor again, it limits the number of retail stores in a town that can sell. So it is, uh, it is beneficial to existing tobacco vendors in town to, to, uh, to have a cap in place. Um, but it also puts the feet to the fire of existing retailers to make sure that they aren't selling to kids. And that is a whole range of products that we really have seen since my tenure in doing this and Jim's tenure in doing this that have ranged from, you know, 50 cent grape cigars to uh, uh, mango jewel uh, vape products. So I, I do encourage you to, uh, to adopt this. It's been very helpful in those cities and towns that have it. And uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, did I miss anyone? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Uh, that's uh, Rick? Yes, it is. Uh, you, I'm on the phone, was... so I couldn't raise my hand, and uh, I was kind of cut off. Okay so, here, okay, so here you are, uh, Rick Blanchard. You have three minutes. Okay. Uh, like I said, he stated, my name is Rick Blanchard. I'm a member of the Board of Selectmen, and I'm speaking on my own behalf, not that of the Board of Selectmen. First, uh, as a long-term smoker, I think the goal of stopping children from smoking is great. I'm all for that. Back in the 70s, I believe the town uh, passed a bylaw that uh, no cigarette vending machines were allowed in an effort to curb youth smoking. That didn't, I don't believe, have any effect because they just went to stores. The lady, I'm very sorry, I can't <laughs> think of your name, had mentioned that uh, to stop people smoking. As a smoker for 41 years, I guarantee you, if you limit where I can buy it, I'm still gonna buy it somewhere. I don't care if I gotta travel an extra couple minutes uh, Mr. Wilson, Willis, excuse me, Mr. Willis, had mentioned that Williamstown has this being in effect. I seem to remember in Iberkshire's not that long ago that a storekeeper was cited for selling to underage uh, kids. So obviously that ban did not have stopped this, uh, the sales there. It's more enforcement. And I think the only thing that this ban would do, or the only thing it would curb, would be growth. Uh, and I believe that's all I have for, you know. Okay, th thank you, Rick. Uh, would any of the previous speakers wish to make a second statement? I see Jim Bush raising his hand. Okay, you have 90 seconds. I too lost my mother to cigarette smoking. She died of emphysema, a very long and painful death. It was horrible to watch. My dad died from smoking. My grandmother died from smoking. I am an ex-smoker for 35 years. Cigarette smoking is a personal choice. You're not gonna stop it by not letting stores open and sell tobacco products. It, it's just not gonna work. They're gonna buy them somewhere, it's 500 feet away. What's 500 feet to anybody? Unless you have emphysema. I mean, let's face it, the, 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 the law just does not make sense for our town. Our, to our business district in Adams is very, very small. It's not like Pittsfield where it's sprawled out of, out of over a huge area where you can have it 
a store in one end of the city and another store in the other end of the city, put one in the middle. You can't do that in Adams. It's impossible. Our, our, our storefronts are they're so close together. I, I would be I'd like to measure them out there. I bet you most storefronts are less than 500 feet apart. So you're going to tell every somebody coming in to start a business, no, you can't have it because you're not 500 feet from the next store. And and, and these fines should be regulating what they want to do with the cigarette smoke and the miners. Okay, and thank, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, 90 seconds is up. Um, I would now just put out a general, is anyone who has not spoken yet uh, wish to speak now? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Selectman John Duvall. Yes. Uh, on the phone. So I just have a, a question. Um, I think most of us remember that the Cumberland Farms um, was looking to build a brand new uh, facility um, at the um, corner of Commercial and I forget the street that the, the corner there, but we're oh, the former Alice Argo gas station location. Uh, Prospect. And, uh, those are, uh, yeah, Prospect. Thank you. And, and those uh, discussions were um, so currently they're they're postponed. Um, so I'm wondering, and you may not have this information, but I'll put it out there as a question for the record: um, Would this impact a new Cumberland Farms? Would they a new Cumberland Farms when they uh, if they were able to build on that site? How would that imp what would that impact be? Um, are they five more than 500 feet away from the Plunkett School or? Yeah, I'm not sure if you have that information uh, with you, but that would be my question. Yeah, the, we will. This has this has been brought up uh, uh, by one of your colleagues on the board, and it is it mm -hmm. will be a matter of discussion. So, uh, so okay. thank 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 you for that point. Thank you. Uh, do I do either? Uh, Pete, do you have anything? that you would like to add or answer any questions that have been posed? Uh, I, I do not at this time. Uh, Laura, do you have anything you would like to add to the public hearing part? No. Uh, and then uh, I believe uh, there might be just uh, a two details. One is the uh, the fine structure uh, is indeed, it, it is mandatory. I mean, this is not something that we and the Adams Board of Health have any control over. It's, uh, it's state mandate. And so uh, that is what it is. And as far as the Cumberland Farms, I believe Cumberland Farms now is close to either BART, I believe it's either close to BART or the elementary school. So it's already out of, would be out of compliance for a new license. And if they moved across the street, uh, I'm not sure whether they would be uh, uh, any, it would make, if they would still be 500 feet within, but I believe this is one of those issues that I think they would be grandfathered uh, by virtue of the fact that they have uh, long-standing presence at that part of town. Uh, so with that, I would, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Uh, for discussion, I will just say that uh, uh, once we close the hearing, uh, the discussion will be only among Board of Health members. Uh, you, you are all welcome to stay and hear our deliberations because we are uh, public. Uh, any other discussion? Uh, I'll, call, I'll call for a vote on, the, on closing the public hearing. Uh, Pete? Yes. Laura? Yes. And Dave? Yes. 
this public hearing is now closed. Thank you all for your participation. Um, totally appreciated. Um, Thank you. So we now move on to this new order of business of, um, of the uh, uh, new order of business of whether we adopt the regulations as is, whether we amend them. Um, we actually do have a few details we need to uh, fix. Uh, and so any thoughts? I believe there were uh, a question about why 11 is as our cap, it only leaves room for one more, and why not make it 12? Um, and what was there? Uh, I think that was the main, uh, I think that was the main question. Uh, do either of you have any thoughts? Because ultimately we are aiming to uh, for attrition down to uh, nine, and the allowing one or two more vendors gives the town time to attract business. Any thoughts on whether we? Keep it at 11, move it to 12. I do think we need to be careful not to dissuade new businesses. Um, and I, I am not opposed to increasing it to 12. I think that might be better. Pete? Um, I, I would agree with that. I mean, I, there's obviously concern about affecting business. My personal thought is I don't really think restricting tobacco sales in the town of Adams is, is really going to have that much damage to, to business in Adams. I, you know, I look at it as, you know, how many permits do we have currently to sell tobacco, but we only have one gym in Adams, which I, you know, let's get more gyms and things to promote physical activity rather than cigarette smoking. That's just my personal thought. Um, you know, I also think, you know, again, I don't know much about business. Um, I'm more of the, the health guy, uh, but I think, you know, Park Street is probably the issue with, with business, you know, and I don't think tobacco sales is gonna go in Park Street and save us, so. Um, right. But again, you know, 11, 12, I don't think it makes too much difference. So, um, you know, if we can increase it to 12 and, and help business, I, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that. It doesn't, but ultimately, I don't think that's going to make too much difference. Well, the regulation, I, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Laura. No, I, I agree with Pete. Yes. Um, the regulation would be if we, cap it at 11 now, we actually need to uh, have a sunset on that permit because if it doesn't get picked up, uh, yeah, yeah it, it would end up being in that uh, uh, equal to a retirement or a, uh, uh, of, of, a, of a license that we would retire that license until we get down to nine. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, maybe this would be a coupled amendment. If we do move it to 12, uh, we can sunset both of those extra uh, uh, permits after one year, uh, or we could uh, sunset one in a year, one in two years. Yeah. So I'm just kind of thinking of options that would leave uh, leave flexibility so that we're not just slamming the lid shut now. Does that make sense? Yeah, I agree with the, 
Maybe having one one year and one expire in two years. I think that that's a good idea. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. So may I make a motion to amend the regulations as they stand? Uh, well, actually, first, uh, we need an effective date for the regulation. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we could make it September 1st. Uh, we, actually, we need some time. Why don't we yeah, make it I, October 1st so we can publish, have, have a chance to publish the notice. I, um, can, can we ask uh, Attorney St. John if, if there's a recommendation on an effective date? It doesn't really matter if we have it too soon? Is, August, is October too soon? No, I don't think October is too soon. I was going to suggest 30 days. That's kind of common for this sort of thing. Okay. All right. So, so David, we're looking at like October 1st or something like that, Don? Yeah, either that or September, September 19th. Uh, uh, yeah, October 1st sounds just, so let's, uh, so I will, make a motion to set the effective date at October 1, 2020 for the new tobacco regulations. Second. Uh, any discussion? October 1 as the effective date. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jim, this is among us. Uh, uh, Pete. Uh, yes. Laura. Yes. And Dave is yes. So the effective date of the regulation is now October 1. Uh, and then I would offer a coupled amendment that we raise the cap to 12 and that uh, one, if it's un, if if one is unused on October 1st of 2021, it will be retired. And if there's an unused permit on October 1st, 2022, it will be also retired. And then following that, the uh, uh, if a license is revoked or or, or retired by the vendor, then we would go down to, uh, we would go down to uh, nine, which is our target. Second. Any further discussion? Okay, the motion cap at 12. Uh, one open one gets retired October 1, 20. 21 and another one is still open in October 1, 2022. That will be retired. Uh, Pete? Uh, yes. Uh, Laura? Yes. Uh, Dave is yes. Okay, regulations so amended. Uh, are there any other any other thoughts about the regulations as they stand? I, I did have a, a concern um, after reading Selectwoman Hoyt's email that maybe it isn't clear. Uh, the transfer process uh, in Section E, is it is it clear how that happens and what that means? Because um, after reading her email and reading through in Section E, maybe we need to actually state the difference between a new tobacco license and a transferred license. Maybe uh, a town council can weigh in on that. Or do you guys have? So, I mean, if a person sells a store and the store moves, I mean, like O'Geary's, for instance, they're, even though they're basically expanding, they're essentially moving. Uh, and so I would not consider that counting as 
a transfer of a license. Uh, I yeah, mean, I guess my question is, is that clear in section E? I think this Can I ask what part of section E you're referring to, Laura? Yeah, so the um, uh, section E, when we're talking about, let me just look. Um, I think it's not, it's, it's not, it's nine E, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, there, yeah. I believe that's the only place. So that it's, it. yeah. So in actually in section, so in section D, a tobacco product sales permit shall not be issued to any new applicant for a retail location within 500 feet. Do we have to state except E, which is actually a transfer? Well, that goes to the issue of whether a particular business was so-called grandfathered or not. Yeah. And if it's an existing business, then they wouldn't be subject to 9D, which is the 500 foot uh, perimeter around a school uh, that comes within within there. So, I mean, for me, I think I understand that, you know, the existing business and someone of acquiring an existing business and their permit would uh, naturally say that it's been, it's, an, it's what you'd call a non-conforming use or it's been grandfathered as a result of its prior existence. So I'm not, I, I'm not unclear about it myself. Okay, very good. Yeah, well, yeah, my feeling is that if somebody came in and bought a current vendor, uh, you, I mean, when you buy a business, you buy, you buy a business and even if they move, uh, I think the move would be subject to the new tobacco license. Yeah, I mean, they couldn't move within 500 feet of a school or another vendor, whatever, but uh, they would be able to move and re even rename the business. I don't see that as a, as, as a problem. Does that, does that make sense? I mean, it's, Makes sense to me. I don't see it as being a problem either. Okay, good. Thank you. Are we ready to adopt the regulations as amended? Do I have a motion? David, I, um, I have one question, if I may, before this. Um, we, we left in that the definition of blunt wrap in in the regulations under section C, um, but it's not mentioned any other place in the document. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and unfortunately Mark is not here. I mean, he, he wanted the blunt wraps included. Uh, I think, I mean, that, that definition is, is boilerplate from the state, and I know there have been some controversies and attempts to refine. Um, I, my, feeling is that it, it doesn't hurt to have it there. And if, if we do feel we need to regulate it, we can always amend the regulation going forward. I think they, uh, I think it was either DJ or, or, or Jim Willis uh, said, you know, without the, without the flavors, uh, blunt wraps are really not that appealing. Uh, particularly to kids. Yeah. Okay. I just, um, sorry, I just wanted to bring that up and I'm, I'm fine with leaving it in. Right, right, right. I, okay. I mean, I, I wanted, I wanted the blunt wrap ban, uh, but uh, and I, neither of you uh, did at the time. And so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with leaving the ban out, uh, but leaving the definition in. Okay. All right, then do I have a motion to adopt the regulations as amended tonight? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, Pete, what say you? Yes. 
Laura. Yes. Uh, and Dave, yes. So motion passes unanimously. We have a cap which will start on October 1. Thank you all very much. Uh, and now <laughs> for the rest of the meeting. Uh, we are at yes. Uh, oh, the next order and the and next uh, item on the agenda is uh, code enforcement uh, report, and we have a number of pending issues there. So I think they will have to wait until September. Uh, uh, old business, uh, all our regulations, st sorry, still working on it, uh, too many other things intervening at this point. Uh, so I would uh, move on to COVID-19 update. Do I have anything from Pete or Laura? No, nothing. Nothing new for me. I missed the uh, call today, so. Uh, I mean, it, it's been looking very good. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, I saw the charts that they sent, but I didn't attend the, the phone meeting. Yeah, the issue is going back to school, and uh, that's why I was eager to hear what Mark uh, could bring. Uh, with uh, this, the uh, the school plans, so we will have to wait for that for uh, our September meeting. And I believe so. Are the the schools are delayed two weeks? Is that? I I, I don't know. Uh, I only know what my school is doing. <laughs> right. It's not, but it's not an atom. So. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and uh, the, the only other thing is obviously we have a, a new police chief. And so I have been in contact with him in terms of, uh, uh, I give him right now a, a weekly <laughs> non update because that's what we've been having. And, uh, yeah. and so, uh, in any case, uh, uh, we have that channel is, is still open. Uh, Okay, other new business. So these are the two items that actually required Mark's presence. Uh, school reopening plans and, and flu clinics. Uh, as far as flu clinics go, uh, I know that uh, uh, I believe the vaccine is available or close to available and, and uh, uh, a lot of discussion, you know, on today's conference call about uh, how to set up uh, you know, drive-through flu uh, flu shots, or how, uh, and uh, it's now actually mandatory for all school students to get a flu shot. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, that order that order came out, and so uh, so it's not going to be discretionary. Uh, uh, so that's, uh, I guess, cause for uh, uh, celebration there that uh, uh, it, it makes it easier on us for promoting flu shots. Um, uh, anything else under flu clinics? So no. more, yeah, more as that becomes available. Uh, and then... Uh, I guess uh, any, uh, local and county updates. Uh, the uh, Health Association fall dinner was canceled and we will be conducting, uh, uh, we, we will be conducting uh, uh, our elections online. I am, I am up for at large representative to the executive committee. So uh, I, I know I'm not supposed to do any political promotion, but 
hoping I have your votes. Uh, and we did, there was a support letter for funding of uh, uh, the special committee on local and regional health uh, uh, and the SAFE funding. Uh, did either of you, or either of you able to sign that? Uh, it came across about, I think August, I think July 22nd was the deadline. For some, you don't remember. I, I, I believe I remember seeing it, but I don't, I might have received it too late after the deadline. Uh, uh, or check my email after the deadline. Right, right. Uh, and and I also just have the note on weekly calls with the uh, Department of Public Health. And, and so I'm glad that uh, we can participate. And I know Mark is a, uh, is a constant participant and, uh, and uh, you know, several times a week. And so uh, I, I appreciate that. Um, uh, and so Ed, <laughs> I came to this for the good of the order. <laughs> And here we typically sort of can say stuff that comes to mind that's relevant. And I just wanted to get your take on that in terms of an open meeting law saying something that might violate. Well, uh when you have, uh, for the good of the order, that type of thing, uh, where you have a free discussion about some topic, uh, typically you can talk about things that are on your mind, but you can't deliberate or take votes on it. Uh, you know, and I, I've seen people in the past try to use it as a platform to uh, see if they could get a motion and have action taken by a particular board. And that would violate the open meeting law because it hasn't been posted, it hasn't been placed on an agenda, the appropriate notice has not been given to discuss it. Uh, people will discuss, you know, all sorts of things, you know, wishing people happy holidays and that type of thing, which is perfectly okay. So you have to be mindful of that. So, you know, when you want to, when you want to say something like state your opinion about, you know, the COVID-19 and, you know, and that type of thing, that's perfectly okay to go and say, well, this is how I feel about something, but you don't want to engage in deliberation or debate about that particular topic and then ask somebody to make a motion to do something because that would be illegal. Then I think it's probably okay for me to say that uh, 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 I was informed that the attorney general's office has uh, actually has a, a, like a 90 minute webinar on open meeting law. Uh, and uh, they offer it a couple times a month. You have to sign up for it. And uh, I have signed up for that next, for the next session. Um, and uh, I can send a link to Laura and Pete if you would just like to avail yourself of it, uh, if if uh, if you wish. Sure. Yeah. yeah. If you want to send the link, that'd be great. Uh, great. Okay. I, I will. Thanks, David. Yeah, I will do that. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's Ed. very helpful, David. That information is very helpful. Yeah, I, my wife took it and, and she said, <laughs> I, uh, even reading your notes, I learned, I learned a lot. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you. Uh, so just jumping on to review mail, uh, uh, the, the Berkshire, uh, the VNA uh, sent us our epidemiology report and it was fascinating to see that, of course, there were a number of you know, COVID uh, cases, but we only had three in, the, in the, that quarter, we only had three non-COVID illnesses. You know, one was insect borne, another was probably fecal oral, and, and another was uh, 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 a serum transmission, which may actually even be a repeat 
and so it was amazing to see that all the other infections were, were way down with the COVID, uh, so a small blessing. Uh, uh, Specialty Minerals, their party report, uh, and National Grid sent their vegetation management plan. They will be uh, mowing and, uh, and, uh, and uh, herbiciding uh, in the upcoming, uh, mostly around the substations, uh, Howland Ave and so forth. Um, so with that, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Are we, um, can we schedule? Oh, right. Schedule meeting. Yes. Meeting, David. Yeah. I, yeah. I put that after the adjournment. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we, we discussed September 16. Uh, is there any possibility moving that up or are we still? Uh, the 16th does work actually quite well for me. If Yeah, uh, it's good, good for me too. Okay. And so, uh, and then we set October 7th as the first Wednesday in October. Okay. So we will schedule our meetings then. September 16, October 7. And uh, now may I have a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. Pete, what say you? Yes. Laura? Yes. And Dave? Yes. Uh, this meeting is now adjourned at uh, 5.07 uh, October 19th. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Thanks, Jim. See ya. Yeah.